Hello, my name is Aaron Babcock. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just sharing uh, this book with you, Foundations of Freedom by the Founding Fathers and the Complete Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. John Jay, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and Patrick Henry. There were some others that wrote too in the Anti-Federalist Papers. So I shared some of my com uh, constitutional law books in common law with you earlier and i have common sense by thomas thomas Paine. it's kind of what he looked like so when they did the first constitution it wasn't called the u.s constitution it was called the articles of confederation and it was right after the declaration of independence and colonies were becoming states and the reason they had to redraft the, the second constitution was there was strengths and weaknesses to this Articles of Confederation. And it was heavily on state rights. There was a lot of writings from the federal farmer letters, um, a lot from the anti federalists of Virginia, and... The South had a lot of the farming community. And, of course, the North was more of the industrial. But um, what I like is Article 3. Not only do they, they put Article 1, the style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America, but number 2... Each state retains its sovereignty, freedom, and independence, and every power, jurisdiction, and right which is not by this co confederation expressly delegated to the United States in Congress assembled. Article 3. The said states hereby severely enter into a firm league of friendship with each other for their common defense, the security of their liberties, and their mutual and general welfare, binding themselves to assist each other against all force offered to or attacks made upon them, or any of them, on account of religion, sovereignty, trade, or any other pretense whatever. So, it makes me think about a firm league of friendship with a variety of states, is when people have rallies, political rallies, and they cross state lines each group they're they do this out of friendship and it's supposed to secure everyone's liberties so they would travel across state lines um it's like if the british were in one state like new york and they were going in people's homes without a warrant and taking taken possessions people from other states would go over there and defend that citizen and stand up for those citizens and that would be called a firm league of friendship they shared self-defense with each other and that's what these articles kind of do in that general welfare <clears throat> be it uh, medicine sharing or uh, food to survive so people don't starve um, a firm league of friendship so the, the thing with the first amendment the redress of grievances it's like a psychologist that you go and see and you dump out everything bad that's happened in your life and when you dump it all out onto that person the psychologist you're you're not carrying that burden anymore that's what these rallies are supposed to do they're supposed to you have a representative that can relate to all the bad things that you've ever went through and then they're supposed to heal that it's just like a psychologist the apologist is supposed to heal and remedy those problems and if they don't you vote them out so that's how that works and uh, 
And when I see the President Trump doing that today, over 100 rallies in his history, he's doing his redress of grievances for the people to protect them as the executive branch is supposed to protect America. So he has every right to have a redress of grievances. So he'll talk about the border security. He'll talk about unfair trade practices around the country, tariffs, and so on. So I understand the redress of grievances as I learn constitutional law. Um, these books are really good, and I, I hope that you can pick, pick this one up. So moving on to this book, The Complete Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. Um, right after the Articles of Confederation, it had strengths and weaknesses on state rights. And so to keep the Union strong, they debated 85 essays in the newspapers and 85 anti-Federalist arguments. And it's really the intentions and interpretations of our U.S. Constitution is in here. And it's really important. And Madison was very anti-Federalist and Federalist when he wrote the papers. In 45 essay to 49, he talks on state and federal encroachments on local subdivision governments. And the pushback is... You not know, just protest, but non-compliance, and then legislative tactics after that. Anyway, it's very good, and the anti federalists are very, they're all geniuses, and they make great arguments as well. So, our Supreme Court cites at least four cases of the Federalist Papers in, in those, in the last couple hundred years, and um, it's, it's because... People need to understand the Constitution a lot more. So I'll talk to you later, and I hope you enjoyed kind of taking a look at these authors. I believe this might be at, on Amazon.com. You can find this book and elsewhere, and this book as well. Uh, very good books to have in your law library. And uh, the Tenth Amendment Center online does a lot of um, awareness of these papers and on video if you like to watch videos. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe if you like these videos.